what I have here is a Fiche 484. Um, this lock bears a lot of resemblance and similarity uh, to the Fiche 450, which picks uh, just like it, I believe. Um, this particular lock um, does not have false gates and is not mastered. You can find these locks with false gates, which makes them uh, quite a bit more challenging to open. Um, you can also find them with mastering, which would make it a little easier to open. <clears throat> so you'll notice this lock doesn't look like a normal uh, lock, uh, especially because of the shape of the keyway here. Um, so this lock is actually a lever lock. It's got five levers on this side and five levers on this side. Um, and when they're all rotated to the right position, the sidebar on the left and right can fall in to the uh, five levers on each side and the core can rotate. There's also two check pins at the bottom of the keyway here, or the top, I guess, if it was right side up. Um, these do come into play a bit while picking. Um, typically the key would push those in uh, when it's inserted. Uh, so it's something to keep in mind while you're picking. You're going to have to come back and check on these and just make sure that they're not the thing holding you up. As you get uh, small amounts of core rotation, just come back and give them a little push once in a while. It doesn't really add a lot of challenge to the lock. Um, they're just there. Um, you got to keep them in mind. So this is the key for the lock. You can see it's a pretty cool key. Um, it's got four sets of bidding on this H-shaped key. Um, it looks a little more intimidating than it actually is because it appears that there's maybe five contact points on each edge for a total of 20, but that's not actually true. Um, what you have on this lock is we've got three pins, if you could call them that, on the top, two on the bottom, three here, two here. Um, so, so on this side, with this portion of the key, I've actually only got two contact points uh, as it's inserted. Once it's in, the lock can open freely. So I'm going to do a partial gut on this uh, before I pick it to show you how it works. And we can talk about um, kind of what's fun about this lock is how easy it is to um, sort of progressive pin it, uh, if you will. So uh, be right back and I'll have it partially gutted. So this is the lock removed from its housing. There's just two screws on the body that come out. Um, what you have back here is a small little back plate, um, which is what actually interfaces with the locking lever on the, uh, on the lock body, which you can just pull right off. Once that's off, the entire lock will just slide freely right out of the housing here. Uh, you'll, you'll wanna keep it upright so your check pins don't come tumbling out. And as it starts to come out, find those sidebars. So I've got a sidebar there and a sidebar here. And I'm just gonna hold those sidebars as I pull this up and out straight up. So I can see my check pins here. I'm just gonna remove them. There'll be a spring attached to the bottom. Um, may or not be uh, still attached when you pull it out, so keep that in mind. And I'll remove those and set those aside. <clears throat> so here we can see uh, the five levers on one side and five levers on the other. Uh, I'm gonna take the sidebars out There's a sidebar. Uh, these do like to hold on to their springs sometimes, which is a really nice <laughs> bonus. Uh, but yep, see this guy. He held on to one spring, but not the other. Um, the orientation of the sidebar does matter. Um, I don't really keep track of it. You just, if it doesn't work one way, you just flip it around when you install it. Check it with the key. Um, so I'm gonna take these out. These don't actually, these are part of like sort of the disassembly I guess assembly system that keeps it all in place, but you can just pull those out um, and nothing's gonna come flying, which is the nice part about this lock, uh, is how easy it is to sort of do just enough gutting to get a feel for exactly how this lock works. So this is the way we were looking at the lock earlier, um, where I mentioned there's two pins or levers that you come in contact with on the bottom and three up here. So if I rotate this up here and insert into the side, I said there was two, we'll see we begin to get rotation on levers two and four. So what you're doing, if you can see it, 
um, is you'll be rotating these levers enough to get the gate in line with the sidebar. So in this case, for pin four, or lever four, we have to rotate all the way to that position. Uh, if you can see the gate there coming into line with the sidebar. As I move over to the other side, this is where I'll come in contact with all three of the other levers. So what's uh, a good tip for attacking these for the first time is do this, take it apart, take a look, um, get a feel for how far each of them have to move. Um, you know, there's always that extra challenge, or I guess, I don't know if you want to call it bragging rights of doing a blind pick or something. Um, but if you try to do that on your first time, you're really just going to miss out on a lot of learning. You know, save the blind pick for number the second one that you buy. For the first one, it's all about just getting information. So what's interesting about this side is I can see that lever one is sort of a zero cut, if you will. It is picked right at the start. So I'm not going to have to worry about lever one. And I can get a good feel for how far each one needs to move as I pick them on both sides. And you can start to get a feel for um, what the sort of pins, if you will, feel like. So if you can see in that lock, you'll notice there's sort of a brass section here and a ball here. So when these levers go in, inside these portions, a ball bearing goes in first. So what you're going to be pushing on is actually the ball bearing, um, which uh, offers a bit of a different feel to a normal pin. Um, it's easy to sort of roll your pick off one side or the other. Uh, so that's something you're going to sort of, the initial challenge of this lock to me was just getting a feel for the actual pins. Um, they're not completely sort of counter opposed to each other. Uh, they are offset, um, you know, like this. Uh, but it is easy also when you're picking this lock, like as you're leveraging one side, to accidentally also push the other side, uh, which may cause you to um, overset a pin. Uh, though it doesn't come into play a lot, it's something to keep in mind. So I'm going to reinsert one of the sidebars, see if I guess the correct orientation. And insert the key. So when the key is in, I can push that sidebar all the way down. When the key is out. This is as far as I can get, uh, just enough that it's going to hold on and prevent the lock from rotating. If you take a look at the inside of the body, you can see these two grooves on the left and right hand side where the slight sidebars come into contact. So what's fun about these locks and why it's easy to sort of um, step your way through the difficulty is because they're very easy to take apart to this extent. And then what you can do is you can just insert one sidebar um, and you can leave the check pins out entirely, insert that into the housing, and you can pick just one side until you get a good feel for that and get opens. And then you can step your way through. So the way I did this is I did one sidebar until I got that open. Then I reintroduced the check pins and I got that open. Then I took the check pins out and did two sidebars with no check pins, got that open, and then reassembled the entire thing into, um, and then was able to get that open. So it's so simple <laughs> to um, sort of progressive pin these and you don't even need any special tools or you know lock disassembly mats or anything like that. Just very few parts. Uh, very cool locks. So I'm going to uh, fully reassemble this and we'll get into picking and I'll share some tips about how to approach it. All right, I've got the lock put back together now. Um, I'm going to tension from the corner of one of the keyways, if you can call them that, keyway corners. Um, if you have a like a perfect fit tension wrench, uh, the center um, would probably work well, uh, but with smaller wrenches that I have, uh, there's just too much free play down in there, but it is a good place to get in and just get completely out of the way of all of the levers. So I'm gonna go up here 
hit the first lever, pull it back a little bit, and tension. Um, I definitely vary my tension um, while doing this. Um, I would never say that I get to like really hard tension where I'm really cranking on the thing, but sort of um, bouncing in and out of maybe medium tension and sort of medium light. So I'm just going to pick a side, uh, the right side, um, just because if you remember from disassembly we learned that lever number one on what is now the right side of the lock is zero cut. <clears throat> so I'm going to skip uh, lever one at the top and go down to lever two at the bottom. Check that first. I think I got a click out of him. Not sure if it's stuck though. I'll check pin three. Uh, I think I'm getting clicks, but they're not sticking. So there's not enough m movement in the sidebar to get them down into their gates. I got a click out of four. I think I might be getting somewhere now. Three doesn't want to stay. I think I got three in place, but four doesn't want to stay. And I, I don't assume five is going to move. As long, I mean, as long as four isn't set, then five isn't going to get set. Um, so. Um, switching sides, just going to poke my check pins as I switch sides just to make sure they're not binding. And move on to lever number one. Uh, I think I got a click out of him. Lever number two is at the top. Nice click out of lever number two. Going down to lever three. Nothing. Lever five, nothing. So I got a couple of clicks, gonna check my check pins, make sure they're not binding, and switch back over. Starting at two on the right, click out of him. Uh, four is grinding, but not setting. Let's click out of three, back to four. Four isn't gonna give me anything. Increasing my tension down to one on the left, three, five, get nothing, two feels set, four feels set, I'm gonna let off tension a little bit. I think I might have overset something. So I got a five on the left. Got a two on the right. Big click out of three on the right. That's a good sign. All right, so we got a big click out of three after getting two, and we know one is set. Um, four. And five are still loose um, so I'm gonna go back and check my check pins and it appears that I am stuck on the left check pin so I'm gonna push him in takes a little bit of work with the tension he'll loosen uh, it up enough so now that the right check pin is probably holding so I'm just gonna make sure they're both loose now side that's two that's four uh, I don't know if you can see that we actually got some movement in the core 
uh, so much so that the lever actually started to move. So whenever you get core movement, you're probably going to be stuck on the check pin. So I'm going to go back to the check pins. Looks like the right check pin is binding. Got him in, which probably loosens up for the left check pin, and he's binding. Got him in. So at this point, if you can see it, uh, both check pins are actually set. So they're actually held underneath the outer body. We got just enough core rotation uh, to get them held down in place. So they shouldn't pop up again, or if they do, then, you know, it's easy to reset them. So at this point, I'm probably really close, maybe just one or two levers away from an open. I'm gonna head back to the pin five on the left side. Nothing on five, nothing on three, nothing on one, nothing on two, nothing on four. Going back to the right side. Two feels set, four feels set. Three feels set. Pin five on the back is binding hard. This may be an open. There it is, got it open. So when you go to open the lock, it's gonna stop at 45 degrees as this check pin rises up into the place of the other check pin you just need to push it back in and open the core all the way uh, the same will happen when you go to close the lock it's going to get stuck at 45 push in the check pin close it up so that's been the pick of the fichet 484 with a little information i hope it uh, helps somebody out there uh, the only other i guess tips i might not have shared is that I have relative success with, um, if I'm sort of stuck and I don't know where to go, with, I don't, know if it, I don't know if I'd call it raking, but I basically just use the flat end of my pick. Um, so I've got three pins down here, and I'll get in the center and just sort of rock it back and forth. And I, I should have gone over this earlier, but the way that the wafers or the levers are shaped, um, so you've got like the round edge and then somewhere on that is the gate. Um, but the way it works is it actually, so if you follow the edge, it rounds up and then it begins to taper down to a smaller outer diameter before the actual gate. And so because of that, um, as you are doing something like, you know, rocking your pick like this, um, you may push uh, one lever to rotate it to say the point of its gate um, which may previously not have been able to drop into the gate because there's other levers blocking the sidebar from falling in you don't necessarily have to get the other levers to their gate as well to set one of them you just need to get them in the position where the sidebar is over the top of that smaller inner diameter after the taper um, you might also find that it feels like you've sort of half set a lever um, where it's still uh, springy and moving in, but it doesn't come out all the way. And that would be a good sign that you sort of partially picked it um, to that lower diameter of the lever rather than the actual gate, which is really quite helpful for picking. Um, I imagine it's there to make the lock function more smoothly, but really it actually helps you out when you're picking because it allows you to get the lever or the sidebar down closer to the gates um, with more core rotation without actually having picked it to its gate. So I think that's all the tips I have. Uh, this is the Fichet 44. Um, good luck, have fun, hope it helps somebody.